start the machine, sit down on the operator's seat and fasten the seat belt around you. Then turn the key and the control panel will come on to the startup screen. After four or five seconds, the screen will change to the main screen. Then, provided there are no engine or system faults indicated, push the engine start button and hold until the engine starts. Do not crank engine for more than 10 consecutive seconds. In cold climates, the engine preheat may activate. In this case, a wait to start icon will appear on the main screen. Wait for this icon to go off before depressing the engine start button. Now let's take a look at some of the buttons on the control panel. If you push the escape button, it will always return you to the main screen. The left arrow will make the control screen darker and the right arrow will make the screen brighter. On the main screen, you will see the oil pressure gauge, the engine RPM gauge, fuel level gauge, battery voltage level gauge, and engine coolant temperature gauge. When the hopper is full, the full hopper alert will flash on any of the screens you may have open. The up and down arrows in the lower right corner of the control panel adjust the engine RPMs. Press and hold the down arrow button to return the engine to idle speed. When the circumstance is warranted, warning indicators will appear at the top of the main screen. Those indicators are the low fuel indicator, operator not present, high hydraulic oil temperature, low hydraulic oil level, and low battery indicator. A warning indicator will flash next to the number 3 button when there is an active system fault. Press the number 3 button to open the system fault screen, then you will see a red marker in front of the function on the list that requires your attention. A yellow warning indicator will flash to the right of the number 4 button when there is an engine fault. If this happens, move the machine off the beach and to a safe place as soon as possible. Most often, this alert means that the pressure in the fuel line is either too high or too low, which may indicate a plugged filter or a broken fuel line. In any event, press the number 4 button to go to the engine fault screen where you will see fault code specific to the John Deere engine. Refer to the troubleshooting section of the John Deere Engine Operator's Manual for more information and instructions for resolving the issue. Button number one on the main screen navigates you to the function screen. On this screen, buttons one and two raise and lower the hopper. Buttons 3 and 4 open and close the hopper. Buttons 5 and 6 raise and lower the groomer bar at the rear of the machine, and button 7 allows you to lock and unlock the groomer position function. Button number 2 on the main screen will take you to the settings screen. Here you can adjust the conveyor speed or the preset depth setting for the digger point. Press button number 1 to increase the conveyor speed setting and number 2 to decrease the speed setting. Once set, the conveyor speed will remain at this preset until you adjust it again using these buttons. 90% is a good operating setting to start with and adjust from there as needed. You can adjust this setting while the conveyor is running to adapt to operating conditions on the go. To start the conveyor, press and release the top red button on the joystick. To stop the conveyor, press and release the same button again. To reverse the conveyor, press and hold the bottom red button. It will run in reverse only while you are holding the button down. To return the conveyor to forward motion, press and release the top red button again. The digger point, sometimes referred to as the cutting edge, slices into the sand at the desired depth as set by the operator so the sand and debris can be lifted and carried over the screen by the flights on the conveyor system. Set the digger point depth by pressing the number 3 and 4 buttons on the settings screen. Once the setting is made here, you will use the joystick buttons to raise the digger point out of the sand and return it to the preset depth setting. The red trigger button on the front of the joystick 
will lower the digger point to the preset depth. To raise the digger point all the way out of the sand, press and hold the upper side of the black toggle switch on the top of the joystick. You can vary the digger point depth from the preset depth one quarter inch at a time by a single tap either up or down on the black toggle switch. To return to the preset depth again, press the trigger on the front of the joystick. The joystick must be in the neutral position to start the engine. Move the joystick forward for forward machine movement. Pushing the stick further forward increases forward speed and pulling back decreases forward speed until the neutral position is reached. Move the joystick backward from neutral to move the machine in reverse. This will also automatically raise the groomer at the back of the machine. Pulling back further on the joystick will increase reverse speed. Push back to neutral to stop reverse motion. The parking brake is automatically engaged whenever the joystick is in the neutral position. The machine is equipped with rear view and screen view cameras with a monitor in the cab. Press the AV button on the bottom of the camera monitor to change the views from one camera to the next or to view both camera views on a split screen. For on-road travel, alert oncoming or following traffic that the machine is a slow-moving vehicle by turning on the road lights and flashers.